Hello and welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells at the Hanover Messe. This is our 18th group exhibit. We're very happy to be here. And right now I'm going to be talking to Eisenhut. We'll be discussing composite bipolar plates and gaskets for fuel cells. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Dr. Thorsten Hickman, CEO. Hello. Thank you. If there are any questions during the interview, please raise your hand and I'll come over and um, let you ask the question. So, Eisenhut, tell us something about your company. Okay, we are um, already <coughs> several years in the market, more than 50, 60 years now, uh, but our origin is uh, machine building, so we are making a molds for uh, plastic and rubber parts. And since uh, six to seven years, we make now our uh, components for fuel cells, such as <coughs> bipolar plates and gaskets. Okay, fantastic. Um, and these bipolar plates and gaskets, are these for all types of fuel cells? Um, no, uh, we are not making any components for the SOFC. So we are focused on the PEM fuel cells, direct methanol fuel cells, and the high temperature PEM fuel cells. Okay, so if we start about the bipolar, um, bipolar plates, um, tell us a little bit about w w what is so special about these and why they're so important in a fuel cell. Well, uh, the bipolar plates are the lung, the lung of the fuel cells. That means they are responsible for the distribution of the, of the gases. Yes, um, you usually have in a fuel cell, you have uh, the meander, that means that uh, all the gases have to be well distributed and that's the reason why uh, it is so important to have good uh, bipolar plates, especially in the design, yes. And which materials are you using for your bipolar plates? We have focused on uh, graphite compounds. That means uh, they are non-corrosive. -cor they are also very reliable in a long-term application and uh, they are as well very well uh, conductive as far as electricity and uh, heat conductivity is concerned. Okay, and, and what about the costs of these? Well, cost is um, one very important issue in this field because the bipolar plate is, besides the MEAS, uh, the, the component which is uh, most uh, built in the fuel cell. So the MEA and the bipolar plates are the two cost drivers. Uh, we do not have platinum in our uh, bipolar plates, but nevertheless the number is still uh, the reason why um, everybody is very keen on having low cost or reduced cost uh, bipolar plates. And in fact we are strongly working on this topic uh, since we have in our company the possibility of uh, making our molds by ourselves. Uh, we can offer our clients a very uh, reasonable pricing for uh, molding and then you can start, the customer can start uh, straight away with his patent uh, bipolar plates and that means that he has already very low cost uh, for his whole system from the, from the early beginning. Okay, fantastic. And how do bipolar plates impact the lifespan of, of the fuel cell? Well, usually if you look at the fuel cell world, you find that uh, for some applications where you need a high uh, power density, you, uh, you stick more to metal bipolar plates. But if you look to very long reliability and to uh, he, uh, high temperature PEM fuel cells, you stick on graphite bipolar plates. So in domestic heating, the micro CHP applications are only uh, bipolar plates driven with, with composite materials and uh, high temperature PEM fuel cells are also uh, composite driven, let's say. Okay, and are you still in um, these uh, gas, uh, bipolar plates are commercially available? But yeah, yeah, we have a lot of customers who have their custom made design and to order frequently as a plates from us, yes. Fantastic, but are you also still in R&D? And if so, what are the areas you're focusing your research uh, on? In our R&D activities, we're focusing on um, new materials, better electrical conductivity, and better resistivity against phosphor acid, for instance, and other aggressive materials. Okay, um, are there any um, questions right now about the bipolar plates before we move on to the, to the gaskets? 
Is there any? Yeah, are you ready to move on to the to the gaskets? Then, um, yeah. Which first of all, which types of gaskets do you produce, and what do the gaskets do in the fuel cell? Okay, um, when you build up a stack, you have the bipolar plates, you have the mea, and then you build it together and find out it's not le it is leaking. So then you have to look for a gasket solution, and uh, this is often one topic which is forgotten during uh, building up or uh, making up a design for a stack. And in fact, we are um, since we also have the the mold technology in house and also the gasket technology in house for automotive applications. We have a lot of experience in this field, and in fact, we can offer our customers separate solutions from separate gaskets up to integrated gasket in different applications. And is it important which type of gasket you use for high and low temperature fuel cells? Yes, yes. Uh, you have to uh, choose or the type of fuel cell is determining the, uh, the gasket you want to use. So usually for low temperature PEM fuel cells you stick to silicone materials, whereas in the high temperature PEM fuel cells you're more sticking to uh, very valuable uh, gasket material such as fluor, fluor elastomeres uh, with a brand name like, such as Whiton and so on. Yes. And can you explain why you use these different materials? Well, um, there are certain requirements. The one thing is uh, uh, temperature, temperature resistivity on the one hand, the other one is uh, the acid resistivity. In a high temperature, high temperature PEM fuel cell you have phosphor acid and phosphor acid materials are not very, um, not very often found in the market, so you have to stick to the fluor elastomeres. Okay, and how do you integrate the gaskets into the fuel cell? There are different types. Um, as I said before, you, if you are still uh, in uh, development status, we can deliver you without additional molding cost uh, one piece, five pieces, hundred pieces to a reasonable a price as flat gaskets. Later on, we can develop together an integrated solutions such as on a bipolar plate or on a GDL or on a MIA. We have uh, realized all these projects already. And which type of customers are most interested um, in this uh, total package solution? All. It's, uh, uh, if you um, add two components together, that, you mean, uh, that means that you have a two component material, you reduce the complexity of the system and you, you reduce the cost as well. And cost reduction is the most important topic at the moment, so we make a strong issue to have a solution for this. Yeah, definitely. And also, um, you're also ready for mass production for both the gaskets and the bipolar yeah. plates? Yeah, we have already customers who are ordering every month uh, certain amounts, as I mentioned before, on a, yeah, a typical customer-client relationship. Okay, fantastic. Do we have any questions at this point from the audience? Okay, then um, I want to carry on about your general impressions of the industry right now. Um, you offer a very specific component and I'm just interested about your thoughts about um, all the companies coming together again at the Hanover Messe this year. Um, yeah, the feeling is pretty good. Um, we have been here several years ago on this uh, fair, on this uh, booth, that means group exhibit. Then we stepped to the um, to the booth of the Land of Niedersachsen. That's the place also where our company is located. It and we came back this year, and I must say, it was a good decision because there's a good atmosphere, good talks. And uh, you have the impression that a lot of ac uh, a lot of players are um, very close for market introduction or are already in the market, have sold their products, and we are a little bit happy that some of the market players use our components. Fantastic. What are you hoping to get out of the Messe this week? In fact, we had a lot of inquiries in as far as gasket is concerned, so I hope we can intensify our business here. And on the other hand, we want to promote our new materials uh, as far as the bipolar plate is concerned. Now, and are you offering your products uh, on a worldwide basis or are you mainly focused yeah. on Germany? Yeah, we are uh, production areas Germany, so made in Germany is our, our vision at the moment. Uh, but uh, we're selling the products all over the world. Okay, thank you very much. And you can go and visit Eisenduch. Um, uh, the booth is at number D71. 
carry on the conversation with uh, Dr. Thorsten Hickman. If there are no further questions right now, um, then I'd like to thank you very much for your, for your thank time. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and please do stay seated because up next we have ITM Power talking about implementing hydrogen solutions in a domestic environment. Thank you.